So, uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to, to be here. Uh, and it seems that we're going to stick with the uh, gender studies uh, related to, to, the, to the punishments, uh, as the, the punishment worse than death uh, is nothing more than uh, being dressed in women's clothing. Uh, I hope you are not disappointed by this. I hope you did not expect some very uh, heavy uh, kind of punishment. Uh, well, uh, we will begin with, uh, 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 with a problem. Uh, the paper aims to propose a new solution to resolve a puzzle concerning the purpose and meaning of a specific category of Roman military equipment, that being parade helmets with face masks that depict female faces and female hairstyles, uh, introducing us to the issue of military cross-dressing. Solving the mystery of this little-known category of archaeological finds is possible thanks to sources mentioning an unusual punishment imposed on soldiers instead of a death penalty. The use of cross-dressing as a way of humiliating soldiers allows us to draw some conclusions on the way such gender manipulations were perceived by the military community. In turn, it means that we must find a new explanation for the use of female helmets in the Roman army. So, uh, I will begin with a brief presentation of, uh, uh, of Roman helmets with face masks. Uh, well, most of them show male uh, faces. They are quite, uh, quite a rare category of finds, uh, but they are of extreme importance due to their rich decorations and uh, ideological uh, uh, values being represented and also they are important in terms of the military religion. Uh, but they are also uh, important today uh, in terms that they are extremely spectacular uh, finds. And uh, you, ma you may remember this particular example is the so-called Crosby Garrett helmet, which was found several years ago in, in Great Britain and was sold for over two million pounds. So basically that shows us the, the value of such, uh, such artifacts. Uh, well, it was found by, 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 by a private person, a metal detectorist, and he got half the value of that. The owner of the land got the other half. That's British law for you. Uh, and uh, uh, such helmets uh, basically all are dated within uh, the time period from the first century AD to the first third of the third century AD. Uh, and uh, they either come as two pieces, the face mask and the rear piece, or three uh, pieces in, in, that in, in case of uh, the helmets that have three pieces, the, the front, the, the mask uh, has a vizier that can be opened. Uh, and um, there are several discussions concerning such helmets. Uh, the most important problem being whether they were used in actual combat. And it seems most probable that in the first century AD it was possible, as they were made of quite thick uh, metal plates. But later they only became more decorational and uh, they had little utilitarian uh, value. Uh, and uh, their appearance uh, seems to be connected with uh, Hippica Gymnasia, uh, that being a kind of uh, tournament or training exercise of the Roman cavalry, uh, which included a series of very complicated maneuvers uh, by two teams of cavalrymen. Um, those are described in detail by uh, Arian in his Ars Tactica. Um, and it must be noted uh, that special parade equipment was used uh, in those games. Uh, special equipment that saw little or no uh, everyday use in the Roman cavalry. Uh, apart from helmets with face masks, those were uh, greaves, uh, very richly decorated, uh, colorful tunics and trousers. Uh, blunt javelins, because uh, the maneuvers consisted of the two teams exchanging missiles, uh, beautif beautifully painted shields, uh, head protection for horses, uh, and all that equipment was extremely uh, richly decorated. Uh, and there is, uh, in the passage uh, about the helmets, 
uh, Aryan tells us that uh, they were awarded to the best horsemen in their units and to the officers of the unit as a kind of award and honor. Uh, and uh, it comes uh, as a little bit of a surprise that uh, something like 20% of such helmets uh, depict uh, female faces, female hairstyles, jewelry. Uh, plus we get several examples of the so-called mixed type of helmets that combine the facial features of a young man uh, with a hairstyle that is a little bit effeminate. Um, they resemble very much Hellenistic sculptures of Apollo, uh, so perhaps that's some kind of uh, uh, reason for, for, for their appearance. Um, and uh, uh, concerning uh, the, the female helmets, uh, some of them have been uh, thought to, to represent Medusa, uh, as they have such iconographic features as snakes, uh, intertwined in the hair, uh, also small wings, also associated with, uh, with Medusa. Uh, but the fact that uh, such symbols appear also on male helmets uh, suggests that uh, we have here rather um, the snake as a protective symbol uh, rather than uh, turning the, uh, the person wearing the helmet into uh, Medusa. Uh, while uh, the majority uh, of female helmets uh, have no such uh, specific elements uh, I, then, and they just uh, represent uh, what we might uh, call uh, perfectly normal uh, representations of Roman women uh, with uh, very fashionable hairstyles. Uh, we can observe that the hairstyles depicted on the helmets uh, change in time with the fashion, uh, so that's quite amazing. Uh, there were several attempts at uh, uh, finding uh, the reason for, for such helmets, uh, the most common being that they represented Amazons and that the whole competition was uh, a kind of mock battle between Amazons and Greeks, uh, but judging just from the, the amount of female helmets it is impossible that uh, one team uh, appears in uh, quarter of, of helmets and the other in 75%. Uh, plus uh, those, uh, those women on the helmets uh, really do not like, look like uh, Amazons, they, they look like Roman women. Uh, there was also a theory that uh, the helmets re represent Eastern princesses, whatever it might mean. Uh, the author did not elaborate on that. Uh, the hairstyles are perfectly Roman, so I think that's, uh, that's just uh, an interesting idea, but with uh, little evidence. Uh, and the funniest is uh, uh, when some of the first such helmets were, were found, uh, the German archaeologist who, who worked on, the, on them claimed that they uh, represent young Persian boys in fur caps. Uh, but uh, uh, later it turned out that most, that, uh, most uh, probably uh, that should be uh, rather called the, the Severan, uh, Severan uh, era uh, female hairstyle and not a fur cap. Um, uh, it can be, uh, th those helmets can be somehow related to the cult of Epona and uh, Campus Tress. Uh, Epona being uh, the, the goddess of horses uh, depicted here uh, and the Campus Trust being a little known uh, group of uh, divinities uh, that protected the training grounds of cavalry uh, and from that role comes their name. Uh, there, there, there is one find of uh, such helmets uh, together with a bowl with a dedication to Epona, that's one of the reasons. And the second is that uh, <coughs> such helmets were most popular in the Rhine and Danube area, where the cult of Epona and Campus Trust uh, also has the largest number of attestations. Uh, plus, the helmets begin to disappear at exactly the same, the same moment that the cult of the Campus Trust disappears, and the cult of Epona uh, also is uh, uh, attested uh, much uh, in much fewer uh, number of, of artifacts and dedications. Uh, so uh, this is the, the mystery, uh, and uh, we will try to, to solve it uh, by by applying uh, an analysis of a punishment worse uh, than death. Uh, 
Uh, luckily, we have some, uh, some sources that are related to the perception of cross-dressing by the Roman military. Um, and uh, uh, the first one is uh, the, 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 uh, the account of uh, Sosimus uh, on the course of the Battle of uh, Argentoratum. Uh, and uh, as you can see on the flank of the Roman army, uh, the Roman cavalry got defeated by the combined infantry and cavalry uh, of their Alemannic uh, enemies. And one particular unit uh, disgraced itself uh, more than all the others. Uh, and uh, Julian, who was the commander of, uh, of the Roman army in that battle, wanted to punish them. Uh, the normal punishment, so to say normal uh, punishment for, for such behavior, abandoning uh, countrymen uh, to the barbarians in battle, would be the decimation of the unit. But, but as modern historians uh, uh, have analyzed this, uh, it would, wouldn't be practical for Julian, as he had a, a small number of trained cavalrymen available. So uh, perhaps because of that, he invented uh, another penalty, uh, which, the, the, which Zosimus uh, described as being worse than death for uh, manly soldiers. Uh, he dressed uh, the, the cowards in women's clothing, had uh, them march through the camp and leave the camp and stay outside uh, the camp. And that was meant to be worse than death for soldiers. And it turned out that, uh, the re as uh, Zosimus puts it, the result was advantageous uh, both, uh, both for Julian and for the soldiers, as in the second war against the Germans, they remembered the disgrace visited upon them and were almost the only troops who fought bravely. There is uh, another example of uh, such humili humiliation of Roman soldiers uh, in the story of Saints uh, Sergius and Bacchus. Uh, but um, it is a legend that contains many uh, historical facts, uh, so it is difficult to date it. Uh, but it gives us uh, the impression that uh, being dressed in, in female clothes was one of the worst things that the uh, military commanders could, uh, could imagine their, their soldiers doing. Um, and, uh, well, saints, uh, those saints uh, were not offended as much uh, as the, the soldiers of Julian uh, because they, they exclaimed with, even with joy that they have uh, somehow become the brides of Jesus uh, in this way. Uh, and uh, nowadays they are considered unofficial patron saints of the LGBT community. So, um, <laughs> Uh, well, and the military attitudes towards uh, cross-dressing, uh, I think in, in all ages, uh, range uh, in uh, have several meanings. The first of them being uh, carnival-like activities. Unfortunately, we, we do not have uh, we do not have much. Uh, sources that uh, are related to Roman soldiers uh, in that capacity. Uh, the Saturnalia come to mind as uh, during Saturnalia a Roman man uh, would dress as women, uh, slaves would dress as masters and etc. A uh, kind of wor world turned upside down. Uh, but we have no evidence for soldiers doing this. We have some evidence for soldiers wearing uh, uh, laur laurels on their heads, uh, wreaths. I think, on their heads uh, during Saturnalia, but not uh, dressing as women. Uh, and uh, it is also sometimes being used to trick the enemy. Uh, but in uh, Roman times, uh, the only examples I have been able to, to, found, uh, to find uh, were that of enemies of Rome doing uh, this trick. Uh, and those are the enemies of Rome that uh, the Romans did not hold in high esteem, uh, being uh, Jewish rebels in Jerusalem, fighting several groups fighting against each other, uh, and uh, a revolt in Egypt in which uh, some groups of uh, shepherds uh, living in the swamps uh, killed a Roman officer uh, while being uh, disguised as uh, women. Uh, and it seems to be of importance that only rebels uh, are uh, doing this trick uh, since they are already uh, 
uh, fighting against social order. So another uh, transgression of uh, such a uh, uh, thing seems quite natural for them. Uh, while, for example, with uh, the, the topos of the so-called noble barbarian that the Romans employed in order to make their own victories uh, seem uh, even bigger and uh, more honorable, uh, those noble barbarians are frequently, uh, they, their armies include women dressed as male warriors. So uh, the rebels uh, dress men as uh, women, while those who, who are brave, even their women, uh, appear uh, in the, on the field of, of, of battle. Uh, and uh, uh, concerning the social implications of enforced cross-dressing uh, to, to the Roman soldiers, uh, we must remember that uh, the uh, biggest virtue of Roman soldiers was uh, virtus, their, their bravery. Uh, and in, very, in the very root of uh, this word, uh, we get uh, the manliness. Uh, so being uh, enforced to uh, wear uh, women's clothes was a blow to masculinity of a soldier. Uh, and it also uh, had this uh, meaning of enfeeblement. Um, and uh, moreover, it, uh, it symbolically excluded the soldier from, from the military community. Uh, and uh, also uh, was uh, related to social degradation. Uh, a commonly used punishment for Roman soldiers was forcing them to remove their military equipment and appear in civilian clothing, uh, especially removing of the uh, sword belt uh, was uh, uh, used to, to humiliate soldiers. And when they were dressed as women, they were not only uh, not being uh, in the proper military equipment, but also not in the proper clothing of a civilian man, so that was kind of double uh, penalty. And uh, uh, we get to, to the final question, uh, could something that was perceived as a punishment worse than death uh, in the military uh, society, could that really be an award and honor that was given to officers and the best horsemen, horsemen in a unit. Well, uh, to understand uh, the, the reason that uh, Romans produced uh, uh, female helmets and female masks, uh, we must say that uh, probably uh, they were not used as all the other uh, helmets with face masks, so they were not an award or honor at all. Uh, we must exclude uh, the possibility that they were used for some carnival-like uh, uh, practices uh, because uh, the military cross-dressing for any such purposes is not attested at all and it's difficult to imagine uh, creating such masks, uh, very expensive also, not, not only today but in the Roman period uh, as well. We cannot imagine them being created just for, uh, for carnival. And it is also difficult to imagine that the purpose of such masks was to punish soldiers uh, as we get uh, uh, some inscriptions on the, mask, uh, on the masks which state the name of the owner, for example. Uh, so uh, we come to the conclusion that the female masks uh, prob most probably were never worn at all. Uh, and since uh, uh, the number of masks, uh, is, uh, female masks, is many times higher than the number of rear pieces of female helmets, uh, plus the fact that their shape uh, differs very much from the male masks. As you can see in this comparison, uh, the female masks uh, always have a flat back, while the male masks uh, have this angle uh, that was used to, to fit with the rear piece that resembled a normal helmet, while uh, female masks had their own rear pieces. Uh, and also the fine spots and contexts uh, in which uh, female masks have been found uh, suggest that uh, they could have been made uh, precisely for the purpose of being hanged on the wall, uh, for example in a temple, uh, 
and they were, in my opinion, uh, they were cult related, first of all, and they were used as votive offerings to the goddesses protecting the cavalrymen and horses uh, during uh, training and during combat, and they were not supposed to be worn by any soldier. Thank you for your attention.